every artist I called up, I said, I want to put this show together, are you available? And they said, anything you want, Chaz. This show is about who we are. And these artists are a representation, a facet of this California lifestyle. Robert Williams was the motivator, is the psychedelic cartoon movement, main motivation of why they had Juxtapose magazine. He was the publisher. In some ways, he gave me the green light. Norton Wisdom. Gary <laughs> Long. Jay for Jay. And John Hamilton. And myself, Chad Smith. In the 60s and 70s, Northeast LA was an amazingly inspiring place. Had everything from hot rodders, low riders, skateboarders. I think it was 2001, there was a show at the Oceanside Museum. It had a few paintings in there. And then in 2002, Riverside Art Museum, really starting to discuss this eclecticism. But then, after that, it was pretty much back to work until 2011. I had a show in Beverly Hills. They extended the show, and I thought, I think I want to do a panel discussion. So they thought that was a good idea, and we wanted to call us the California Locos. We started in Chinatown. We went to Miami, had a show in Venice, Virginia Beach. We've had collaborations with Nano Nobrega there from Dusters, California. Since 2011, for me, it's been nothing but the California Locos. I entered more as a person who wanted to know more about Andy Warhol, how technology, how media worked. 67 and 68, you had these concerts going on in San Francisco. The Starkist Tuna Company gave us about $35,000, and we started up a company called Pinnacle. So I'm known for this Hendrix poster. The poster I did within the surf culture, The Endless Summer, was selling all over the country. So that led me into uh, record covers. And I was in the record business for like about 15 years in the 80s uh, as a design consultant. And then I became too old for that. And then I had to go back to visual arts. I had a lot of images that I could take out of my archive, but there's a lot of images I could create. So that's all advanced itself now into mural making, which is kind of an interesting world. I'm Gary Wong. I am a product of Los Angeles. I grew up on 21st Street. My parents had a rain on me, but they didn't know that I was a crazy motherfucker and I liked to be in the streets. I used to sneak out and go to the museum because my cousins would beat up on me and I just wanted to escape all that. Skip forward, I'm entering art contests, poster contests. Applied to Art Center, applied to Chenard, applied to Otis. By default, Chenard took me. That happened to change my whole life around. Started my first blues band with a cat named Terry Allen. And we sat down and had that little panel in Beverly Hills. I looked around and I think we all looked around and looked at each other and said, damn, we've all been there, we're still here. And I think that's uh, what brought us all together. My name is Norton Wisdom. I also was in Chenard's in the early 60s. Whatever we do has to be from the heart, and it has to be about a journey that somehow makes humanity realize its value. So I went to Berlin by myself in 81 and painted this mural 150 meters on the wall and was arrested. So at that time, the punk world was in full fire. So in 81, I started painting in a band called Panic and where I, Dave and I started crossing trails, zigzagging back and forth. I tour the world with rock bands. I played stuff with The Doors, a lot of the Wilco band. I don't know if you guys know Wilco. I performed at the Disney Hall. I'm glad to be an honor to be part of this, this group. Beauty is a very essential element to the human being and, and that we have to do everything we can to proceed as a human race. I told myself I want this show was going to be a mission to honor and celebrate the aesthetics of the West Coast. I am the oldest, longest writing graffiti writer in the world. There was a couple of guys who started before me, Cornbread and Taki, but they never continued. I continued. To be recognized was in New York, not in sleepy Los Angeles, where it gave us a time to lay back to make our skateboards out of uh, two by sixes with steel wheels. All the collectors there in uh, New York and there in Europe, they all knew about the New York graffiti movement. But when I asked them if they knew who Robert William was or in all this, they said no, they didn't know who those people were. That made me angry. 
and that's a motivation. So that's what we did. We got six more monster artists. You had to be that surfer. You had to be that low rider. You had to be influential. Those artists are Robert Williams, Shepard Ferry, Esteban Odio, Slick, Mr. Cartoon. My name is Robert Williams. I'm a oil painter. I started in art school in 1963. Spent my earlier years doing commercial work, illustration. But uh, I, I support all the forms of art, but unfortunately abstract expressionism dominated the art world like a fascist ghost. And I ended up getting a job with Ed Big Daddy Roth, a custom car builder. And all of a sudden my life, my life got rich. By this time, I was incidentally going through my psychedelic period. Entering the fine arts world was pretty much impossible with this sort of material. I come out with a book in 80 called The Lowbrow Art of Robert Williams, and that's what uh, ignited the, the lowbrow art movement. I was instrumental in starting Juxtapose magazine. I went up to San Francisco and told them how to lay it out. I think I've talked too much already, you know. <laughs> I could have listened to Robert for another 30 minutes, to be honest with you. I was born right here down the street. I would kind of know where I was at by reading the walls, you know. I loved art and I loved cars. And my old man, he could name any car of any body style of any year. I thought he was a genius. I started airbrushing t-shirts at the swap meet and the car shows. I ended up working for Hustler and being an uh, illustrator. They would give me all the hardcore mafia related artwork, but that's another story. I'll take me 30 minutes to tell that one. Tattooing was, is a whole other world. Your canvas shows up drunk, it shows up late, it's an art director. Once I had tattooed Eminem, I didn't need to have my portfolio with me no more because he was on the cover of Rolling Stone or Time or some shit going like this with this tattoo, you know? And my best friend, Esteban, I met him at one of those record release parties. He was a tour manager for this little group called Cypress Hill. I was doing album covers. I met Eazy-E at a car wash. I just walked up to him and gave him my business card, all nervous and shit. And he gave me like three different album covers to do. Surround yourself by other weirdos, other people that are on the same mission. Because me and him, we were on the same mission from day one. But I'm grateful to be at this table with all these gentlemen sitting right here. Now it's time for our boy Slick. I can't say I'm a real, real painter. I can't say I'm a real sculptor. I like to create shit. I'm originally from Hawaii, and I actually came to Los Angeles to stop doing graffiti, which is really ironic. But everything I did always went back to the graffiti. That's always my, been my passion. And then as far as Robert Williams, our paths crossed. I think we did a Red Hot Chili Pepper video together. Uh, they used some of his images from Taste the Pain or something, and I was actually asked to, to graffiti up the whole video. Fast forward to like 89, 90, I decided to put my own stuff on t-shirts because there was a void at that time, but I felt there was nothing that spoke to us. We started printing our own shirts and to me that was an extension of graffiti and getting up. We didn't have the internet and, and all that stuff, so people would have to go to our piece to go see something, whereas on my shirt, somebody could be in New York wearing my shirt and that's, oh, Slick did that, you know? Thank you, Slick. We're not excluding anybody. Maybe this is a door and a window for of what really needs to be said in this city. The women need their show. They're locals too. We're a bunch of dudes, basically older dudes, right? A lot of women have worked with us, written about us. The original guys were just people I knew. But the bottom line is art is the final arbiter. We all, whether we're men, women, whatever community we're in, I don't know about you guys, but when you're alone in your studio and there's nothing, that's, that's where you're made as an artist. Sophistication in LA is just funky as hell, and uh, the academic world really just doesn't want to admit it. I think most of us up here did our art for nothing. And then money came in later, after years and years. You can't be in it for that, man. You gotta be in it for the love of it. Yeah, there should be some, some females up here. It's a great time right now. There's a lot of females tearing it up out there, you know? With all these guys here, with the energy and passion that they've put into their art, it hasn't been lost on the world. It might have been lost on the LA uh, academic art world, but the rest of the world has really enjoyed it. I was there, I saw it, I feel it, I followed it, and here I am today.